Hi, my name is David Nagel. I'm the author of The Millions Within, and I'm the owner and founder of Life Is Now Incorporated. Our podcast is the Successful Mind Podcast. And in the Business Growth Architect Podcast, we're going to talk about the double binding message and how to uncover your sabotage pattern. See you in the show. Hello, fabulous person, Beata Shalet here, the Growth Architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts, and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Welcome back. This is Beata Shalit, your host for the Business Growth Architect Show. And today I have to say we are doing something that is on my bucket list. We have David Nagel, who is my brain trainer and my mindset coach here on the call with us. David, I'm so excited for you to be here. Wow. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute honor. Excellent. So for somebody who has, is maybe not familiar with your work, um, please tell them who you are and what you do. Well, my name is David Nagel. I'm the owner and founder of Life Is Now Incorporated. We are a business consulting uh, and mindset company uh, that has been in business for 24 years this month. And we work with businesses all around the world in helping them not only with their mindset, but with the strategies for them to become uh, more successful and then to meet the desires and the goals that they have for their own life and business. And as I said, you know, I am one of your students and you had said back when I joined and that was during the pandemic, you said that you may find that looking back that this was really a moment in time where a lot of it changed. And I just made a joke, which I'm going to just take on the podcast because it was really funny. I said, you didn't tell me how bruised I was going to end up being in the process. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And like I said, like I said, I hadn't heard that one before. I've heard things similar, but I haven't heard that one. So that's good. Yes. And so um, talk to me a little bit about strategy. So people do people commonly assume that uh, stuff around mindset is even a strategy. Share with us. No. What is it? No, they don't. As a matter of fact, the the idea around mindset, which is really unfortunate, uh, is that it's got a more of a definition of being woo woo, you know, like mystical or or that type of an idea. Um, and I understand why I think because some of it is is mixed with a spiritual message in in many cases. Uh, and even sometimes with, with a religious message, depending on who's offering the message. I usually like to come from a universal component, but the, the part, that reason, though, is based on the idea of where do we start with mindset? Where does mindset and the information in the universe actually begin? So that's how I think it kind of got muddled up. But what is really significant about this and I didn't know this because, I mean, I was raised middle class um, and I was struggling terribly. I mean, I was really struggling. Everything was going really bad. And I went bad. I mean, my car was repossessed. We, we went bankrupt. We had to leave our house in the middle of the night and go live in a bad neighborhood because we couldn't afford, you know, anything else. We were on food stamps. It was really bad. And I had an experience. It's a really long story, but I had this experience where... I, I made a couple of changes, two, three changes in my mindset, and it my income tripled in 30 days. And I was like, wait a minute, this isn't supposed to happen. How is this even possible? So it started me on a path of trying to understand an experience that I had so that I could replicate it, if at all possible. I mean, I was like, I don't know what to do. I couldn't figure it out. And I stumble across, I do something just on a, on like on a chance, right? And I have this magnificent breakthrough and I didn't understand what happened or why it happened. So then I started down that path trying to figure out what happened. And I spent seven years uh, studying with some of the most magnificent people on the planet. And I, when I learned what I had done, I was really astounded to find out that it was, it all started off with mindset, the way that we think, what we believe what our values are, what they're not. Uh, and all of that is shaped by the environment that we're raised in. 
And we will never really break out of that if we don't learn anything different. We will basically live within the equivalent of what our childhood was if we don't ever learn anything different from a mindset strategy perspective. Because that's the thing that leads to accepting other strategies to be able to move out of a situation that might be difficult. So what really strikes me about this, David, is that I think that there is a idea that life is happening to me and that I'm going to have to make the best quotation mark out of uh, what I, what the cards I've been dealt with. And oftentimes I don't know if it is because somebody is either doesn't know or it's too much work. (laughs) Do you think that there is an awareness that mindset is an actual strategy and that it's a a tangible strategy and it's ruled by you know you always talk about the laws of the universe or do you think that people people go and say well mindset that's the meditation part right i I know i need to have a better spiritual practice yeah so do you think that that's the problem and why this is clashing i think people don't know they, they really don't know. And if they hear it, they associate it with something like you said, like with meditation. So they don't see how it would be applicable to, to the problem that they're in. Um, and from a real, it's a real ignorance issue. I absolutely did not know. But I will tell you this, you did say something that, that I really agree with. You said something about it being too hard. When I was when I was growing up, when I was a child, if I ever showed interest in anything, I had this very weird feedback that I would get from my parents and my grandparents. And it was all about how it was going to require me to do all these different things in my life that I didn't like to do. And if I was going to pursue that, like I would have to go to school for a long time and study real hard and get really good grades. And I hated school. And I probably hated it because nobody taught me how to be successful in school. Um, And it caused, it it was a major issue. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, the only way for me to be successful is to do all these different things that I don't like to do that I can't get myself to do. How the hell am I ever going to be successful? And that was a real significant issue in my mind. And I actually, my my breakthrough kind of came when I was like, okay, I'm not responsible. I'm married. I've got two kids. I've got responsibilities. I have to break through somewhere and become better so that I can live up to these responsibilities. So if that means that I've got to go back to college to do it, that's what I'll do. But I couldn't even figure out how to do that because I didn't have the time or the money to do it. And that was in the late 80s, right? So I was so stuck in the, the formulation of success that they gave me, even survival that it just didn't seem to work. Like everywhere I turned, I ran into a brick wall. I couldn't get out. Do you think that what happens is that when you are making that commitment to making a change on probably a partially subconscious and a partially conscious level, right? Because the pain now has gotten so big. Do you think that there is a way um, that our deep desire that you talk about a lot or or God, spirit, universe, that there's somebody with a sign and says, stop, not here, wrong way, wrong way. And now you get really frustrated because you are pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and everywhere you go that you think that there's a dead end. And that leads into one of my next questions. But do you think that as we are breaking through that we are creating these obstacles that it is, and you just did a podcast on the meant to be, right? The yeah. looking at, is it a sign? So what's happening when I'm willing to change and all this stuff just pops up and it's in my face and I am having this fear pit in my stomach? So the what happens is, is that you have a value conflict that's actually taking place. And basically what that means is this, you want something over here, but you have a belief system that negates this. And as you start to move in this direction, the the competition that happens between your desire of what it is that you want versus the belief that you can't get it, or it's not right to get it, or who do you think you are to get it, 
that starts to call, cause problems, which we can also very often actually make determinations like, well, maybe God doesn't want me to do this, or maybe this is a sign that I'm not supposed to do it. Because we don't understand why we're getting the resistance that we're getting, and nobody has ever taught us that we're the one that's creating the resistance, and we don't even know how we're creating the resistance. So it becomes a very big block for the average individual. Yes, I mean, and 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 you know, full transparency. I'm up. I've been up against this probably for the last three to four months. You know, I'm, you know, I started working with you. I made some major changes. You know, talking about what I wanted, what I didn't want let things go that I was really attached to, including, you know, I had a great opportunity to do a second gig for the LA Philharmonic, which I like, but it's not aligned anymore with, with where I want to go. Okay. And so I had to say no to that. And that was very, very painful, but, but it, it is clear that the, the direction, the direction has been determined. And then it feels like there's this, counter force that you know and i have nightmares about this and i wake up i'm going like this is so intense i don't even know where this is coming from which is why i wanted you on the podcast so bad because i know a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff right now and they're experiencing this value conflict but you say i create this for myself we create this for yeah. ourselves how do we figure out what it is does it matter to figure out what it is or it does or do we give it, give it no value no it does matter because if you if here's what i do with my clients when they run into this situation i ask them very directly what are you currently resisting being doing or having because there's a principle behind this and the principle is that there is no confusion or stuckness in the universe the universe just flows it always flows toward more life. So if we get stuck, we're resisting something that it's, it's not allowing us to see what is the breakthrough. I have a, I have a friend that I've, a, a person that was a client of mine for a long time. Her name is Darla Ledoux. And she said something to me one, one day that, that I was like, not only is that one of the funniest things that I ever heard, but it is extraordinarily accurate. When she was working with a therapist and she was talking about, uh, you know, she would go from she would go from uh, having a little bit of a breakthrough to being stuck. And the therapist said something like this. She said she's trying to encourage her. She said, you know, um, when one door closes, another door opens, but the hallways are a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And when she told me that, I just rolled. I thought that was one of the funniest things that I ever heard because, and it's also very accurate. When you're in this space where you've decided to walk away from one thing and you're looking for the door to open up, there's usually a, a, a certain amount of confusion that is taking place at that time. And if we understand that our subconscious mind is actually looking for a way to be have a sense of certainty or safety, we can recognize it, but also understand that we need to break through whatever we are resisting so that we can see what the next door is. And then, so now that we talked about the value conflict, so, you know, there is a conscious knowledge and a decision that says, I am, I decided to do this. Then there is my fear pattern that comes up that says whatever you can't do it or what are you thinking you know like the classic stuff um, most people are up against when they make changes now I go and I say okay I'm going to look into into where this is coming from how do I find out I mean is it just about saying what I'm uh, resisting is the resistance in do I step into that or is the resistance to say I got to go back to my mommy and daddy issues on why I wasn't. No, there. no, I don't think it's that at all. I think that when, so here's what happens. If you're having a conversation with somebody and they're telling you that they're stuck, they're not aware of what they're resisting. They they're focused on their, the fact that they're stuck. So if you come in and say, listen, I want you to, I want you to refocus on something. Here's, here's the suggestion. 
what is it currently in your life that you're resisting being doing or having it'll instantly change their focus and they will tell you exactly what they're not doing it's always there they're just not looking at it as being part of the problem um it may have a different connotation related to it it might have to do with money it might have to do with a person it could have to do with opportunity but they're not seeing it as something that needs to be done as a precursor to be able to walk through and have that have that breakthrough where it, it, you have ease of effort type of an idea. But that question really refocuses their mind on what's going on. Now, in defense of what you said, if you say that to the person and then they say, I just can't do that, right? You might have to go into what those early childhood issues are that are causing them to be afraid of walking through uh, whatever the challenge is, whatever the, you know, whatever that obstacle is in their life. You know, I have a great experience share for you, uh, which is something that I actually learned from you. There was a part in our training where you had talked about dragging around that anchor. And then I had this visual of myself being on this sailboat and I was dragging along this anchor. And then, you know, being the good German, you know, I went and got a diving suit and a wetsuit and I learned how to dive. And I looked at that anchor. I took lessons on, you know, how to untie anchors from when they're stuck. And then one day you just said, just cut the darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know I could do that. And right. I and it was such a profound experience, you know, I'm, you know, I have definitely some, some issues with my mother and then that, that changed everything because then I'm like, I don't need to figure out why the anchor is stuck or have to become <laughs> an expert on anchor untying and uncovering and recovering. I'm just going to get a new one, or maybe I'm not going to need an anchor at all. And I, but I just cut it and, and I'm sailing ever after, but that cool. was, I keep telling that story because to me, it's so profound. Don't drag your anchor. You can let it go. So the next step now is um, now I'm in my hallway, you know, I'm closing one door firmly. I'm stepping into the other door. And now a pattern happens that you call the self-sabotage pattern. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell our audience, how do I recognize that I'm in a self-sabotage pattern and what should I do when I see it has, it is happening? So first of all, um, a self-sabotage pattern to, to sit and consider that you have one is not anything that you should use as like some kind of self-judgment against yourself. This isn't about judgment. A self-sabotage pattern is basically a self-preservation pattern. It's developed or the beginnings of it are developed within the first year of our lives. And the reason for it is that the way that our subconscious mind works is it's based on learning pattern recognition from a very early age because we don't have language or any really way to communicate with mom and dad in order to get our needs met. And in the in the in the uh, in the very in the very smart view of whatever it is that created us as a living being, recognize that if that pattern gets broken between mom and dad, this child dies. Okay, this form of life actually will perish. So those established um, uh, I, those the patterns happen very very quickly. Okay, now. What does that pattern do? That pattern figures out what works to maintain contact with mom and dad so that we get the needs met, so that we live. And they keep reinforcing themselves all the years that we're going through our childhood. So what ends up happening is that once we start to go out on our own and we begin to start to explore different areas of our life that we're not familiar with, we're stepping into vast amounts of unknown right? I'm going to try a new job or a business or a new partner or whatever. I'm stepping into the unknown. Your subconscious goes, wait a minute, we don't have a pattern for this. What is this person doing? So what it develops is a different pattern that, that also develops throughout your childhood that tries to get you to stop doing something that it doesn't have a pattern. It being your subconscious doesn't have a pattern for, for the only reason other than it wants to make sure you survive. See, the subconscious mind is only concerned with two things. 
and that is the survival of the person and procreation to pass the gene pattern down to the next generation. It's not concerned with, are you happy? Are you healthy? Are you having fun in life? It doesn't care about any of that stuff. So it's a survival pattern in the preservation of our life. How do we know that we're going through it? Well, the first thing that happens is that all of a sudden we will become aware. So let's, let me just, let me just back up a little bit. We decide that we're going to, a, we're going to create a goal. We're going to name a goal. We're going after something that we want. Perfect. We start to walk into the direction of that or what we think is the direction is. And the subconscious we, goes on alert. And it's like, this is not familiar. So what it does is it needs to create confusion. I mean, psychologically, we know how this works. It creates confusion to get you to refocus on something that you're already familiar with that's important in order for you to back off where you're going. So how does it do this? It literally starts looking for a problem that's already in your life to exacerbate in some way. This is the craziest thing. When I first learned this, I didn't realize that I was doing it. And then when I realized that I was doing it and how it worked and I started working with other people, without fail, every person that I've ever worked with personally goes through this if they continue to grow. So it was, so I would tell people, here's what's going to happen. You're going to start to grow. Your subconscious mind is going to create some kind of damn problem in your life to get you to take your focus off where you're going and, and, and convince you that you've got to solve this problem and you can't focus on the direction that you're going. And I've never seen it, this not happen, by the way, it's just different degrees of what the problem is. So the first thing is that you start to, you start to go in this direction and then all of a sudden you have you have problems start to show up in your life right situations circumstances this type of thing it could be interpersonal it could be you like a health issue it could be you have a, a fight with your spouse or your lover it could be something happens with your kids a dog runs away the electricity gets shut off any kind of problem but what we want to watch out for is that our mind doesn't go into the conviction that I can no longer go after this goal because I must solve this problem. Now, here's the fine line on this. The problem is real. This is not like people are making this up in their mind, right? They're actually creating it subconsciously. They just don't know that they're doing it. So it's real. It is in their reality. It's actually what they're experiencing. So they do need to deal with it from the perspective of responsibility, right? Like I've got this issue in my life, I have to take care of it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But you don't have to get emotionally involved in it. And you don't have to let it become a distraction off of the goal that you're going after. When a person understands that this is going to happen, regardless of what they do, they can be on the lookout for it. So they don't get overwhelmed by the story that they tell themselves when it begins to show up. And the reason for that is that your subconscious mind knows exactly what it's going to take to turn you around. And what happens is it convinces you to move into the agreement of this is more important. So we actually go into this. It's like an illusion in our mind where we end up agreeing with the reason that's going to cause us to quit. You, I've also studied failure as, as, I've, as I've studied success. And the interesting thing about failure is that you will never run into somebody and go, you know something, I failed. And the reason that I failed is because I didn't have the ability to break through this, that, or the other. And I accept responsibility and I'm going to live a lesser life because of it. Everybody that fails will tell you the excuse. They will tell you the story. They will tell you the reason that they believe caused their failure. But that's their subconscious mind convincing them that this is an obstacle that they can't get through. Or... It tries to rationalize it like, see, I told you success wasn't worth it because you start going after this. Now you've got problems in your marriage or you're not focused on your kids. You need to take that time and do this. And other people will get in the story as they see it happening. And of course, everybody's telling you what their own bias or their paradigm is around those ideas. So that's how you recognize it. And the and the and what I do with every client before we even start working on what whatever we're going to work on, we unravel their sabotage strategy because it will do something else that's really interesting. It will make an enemy 
out of anybody that you had brought into your life to support you on your goal, which is fast. I didn't realize it was going to do that. When I first started coaching, I ran into a very interesting problem, not with everybody, with, but with some people. They were, they were being rock stars. They were, they were going great guns. And then all of a sudden, I would talk to them on the phone one day. They wanted out of coaching. They wanted a refund. They started blaming me. And I'm like, wait, what? What happened? What's going on? And I realized that the subconscious mind tries to close that door so that they can't go back. So it convinces them that anybody that was supporting them is basically the enemy. And if they understand that ahead of time, you can help them or they can even help themselves recognize when they go into this sabotage process, it won't be comfortable. There's no question about that. But they, it will allow them to make more educated decisions about how they're going to handle it as they go through it. Yeah, you, I mean, there's so much in here that we can unpack and, and look into. But I think what really sticks out for me is, and, you know, the reason I wanted to talk to you about this, I think that there is definitely an awareness right now. I mean, if I've ever seen a self-sabotage pattern of the world uh, stepping into effect right now, it is right now. I mean, It's right now. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I mean, it's just nuts. I mean, people are making preemptive decisions to not move forward yes and 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 even though there is no actual reason to do so i mean we are in business consulting coaching strategizing we establish mindset as a part of your strategy i always say david that if i think protecting that my arms go over something and the energy presses down if i if i think growth my arms go and the energy goes up because you know growth always goes upward so you make a decision protecting goes down it can't grow like literally it can't yeah. grow yeah. Uh, whereas growth goes up so with this self sabotage pattern right so now i'm now i'm 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 going oh my gosh i, I catch myself i i caused a fight in the relationship yesterday you know maybe that's because i i know i can handle things by myself but you know, I'm, I'm going to throw this like lone wolf thing in there or, um, you know, I picked a fight with my sister, my my brother, my my mom, my dad. How do we how do we stop? Is there an awareness of. You know, do I step back in gratitude? Do I just you always say give things no meaning? It has no meaning other than the one that you give it to. Do you have like a tool if somebody says. Blows my mind. I'm in a self-sabotage pattern. How do I stop it? Well, first thing is consciousness. So the, the fact that they can recognize that they're in a self-sabotage pattern is 90% of fixing it. Because it the only reason it usually works is a, a person is unaware of what's actually happening. They're, all they're focused on is what's going wrong. So if they have the heightened awareness... Um, as you say, you know, that, that this is what, this is what's happening. And I know why it's happening. The idea would be that I would tell a person not to give the problem any meaning other than what needs to be done to deal with the problem based on how it's affecting your life, which is the responsibility part, right? I, so I know that I've got this problem. I've got to deal with it from a responsible perspective, but I'm not going to give it meaning. In other words, I'm not going to say, oh, this is going to cause me to failure. Why is this happening to me or go into self-pity? I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to work through the problem. I'm also going to, I'm going to control that problem in a big way. Like I'm going to determine when I work on it. It's not going to control my life. Okay. I will put, I will put what I need to do around it in the calendar. I will look to delegate the best that I can if I can do that to get somebody else to help me with those issues. But I'm not going to get emotionally involved to the degree that it starts controlling me. I think that's really the big separation that we want to communicate for those folks is don't get emotionally involved in it. Don't create a dramatic story around it, even if it's a really traumatizing issue. I mean, it could very well be, right? Right. So I could see how it's easy for a person to step into that. But that's the only part about anything that they can control, how they react to this problem that's showing up in their life. And like you said, you're, you're experiencing this more and more. Um, 
for multiple generations now, like two, three generations, we have not seen this much uncertainty in our world ever. Like if you went back far enough, you could, but not anything that any of us or our parents or our grandparents even experienced this much uncertainty in the world. So when there's that much uncertainty, you have to get people to focus on the things that they can create in their life that they can be certain about, which is always something that they feel that they're in control of. Yeah, I think that this is really a moment where there's so much uncertainty and people are so afraid. This is the time to lead, I think. And yes. this is the time to take um, the certainty approach because I think for especially the coaches, consultants that are listening that if you are experiencing clients or prospects going like all kind of wacko on you, I think you need to double down on the certainty and say, this is what needs to be done in a situation like this to, to rebuild trust and safety. I think to me, those are right. the really two big words that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing right now. Um, are you, what would you, you know, say to our listeners that are going like, wow, this, 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 I'm finding myself in these patterns. Um, is there a particular message that we can give them to say, you got yeah. this, it's not always going to be like that. What, what is it going to be, David? <clears throat> so history shows that the people that progressively work on creating their life the best that they can during uncertain times come out on the other end, the best. It's the ones that don't do anything or they try to hide their head or they let their fear lead them that get completely destroyed during these times. Because the times that we're living in affect us emotionally, financially. Um, they're affecting us based on where we're in the world. I've got clients all over the world that are experiencing various different changes that are happening. They have to get very much in control of the direction that they're going because that allows them to learn how to overcome all the different challenges that happen and they can make conscious decisions. They're not overtaken by the fear. If they start to let their mind get overtaken by the uncertainty, that will compound on them and they will, you know, it goes into learned helplessness is what happens. And then they're, they're just totally frozen. I mean, there's people right now, famous people, I'm not going to say who they are, but there's famous people that are stuck in their basement because they're afraid to come out because of the pandemic. And they're not convinced in their mind that it's safe to go out in the world. And I'm talking about famous, successful people being completely stuck because this completely hijacked their, their conscious thinking and, and they don't know how to think accurately to get out from under it. So what I'm hearing you say, and I, you know, I've been around you long enough that I, I dare to say that, your preferred method to combat anything is take action. Yes. <laughs> yes. Take, take, take controlled action, action. controlled yeah. action. Right. I mean, obviously if, if it's like wait to do this for a little while, whatever, but it's about, it's about directing your life forward, not having it be directed for you by somebody else. Yes. And, and that, that's really, I think a great message for us to, to leave our audience with because you know, again, you know, the value conflict, the double binding message, when you are unclear within yourself, because you want something else, and something else is pulling you back, not giving things more meaning than they have to, it just is, That's it's right. not, not good or bad, right? I think you talk about this. So I'm going to keep you just for one more minute. And help us understand the judgment. So why do I want to uh, judge an experience as good or bad? The reason that we do it is because we were taught that it'll keep us safe. Okay. And the damnedest thing about it is that at one time, that was really true. Now we're kind of moving back into a time that's like that again, because we've got a very significant cancel culture that we're dealing with. But if people would really understand that that cancel culture only works if you believe it, right? If a group of people get together and try to cancel you, it only works if you feel that you've been canceled. It can't work if you're like, oh, puff off, like I'm, you're not going to cancel and you go away. It'll, you have to believe it in order for it to work. But in our history, there were times when dictators ruled every place on earth. And if you stepped outside of the narrative, you could be tortured or, or put to death. So 
really coming up with correct judgments was very, very important. It could save your life or it could cost you your life. But for most places, we've moved out of those times, but the tradition of the judgment's been passed down. So it's passed down from mom or dad or whatever, and they become crazy ideas that no longer exist in the time frame that we're living in. Um, so the idea is to understand this. Every single thing can only affect you based on the story that you give it. Nothing has any meaning uh, other than the story that we give it. We determine whether it's good or bad. We determine how we experience it. People did not come here and get a handbook when they got on earth that said, here's what everything means. They developed meanings about things. And if you have a history, a family that gave you meanings about things that are not true or, that, or they're hurtful or, or more in line with self-sabotage, you've got to put that down and really start to think for yourself about what do you want something to mean? Because nothing has an absolute meaning of its own. Yeah, I think that that is absolutely true. And, you know, from personal experience, I think this is the daily ministry by listening, you know, I can't even tell you how many days I've listened to podcasts of yours. Um, and over and over again, sometimes, um, you know, I use your method of just taking a book and putting my finger down on a page to see yeah. what, I, what I need to be hearing at that moment. But um, I hear that you also are giving us a message of, of grace with ourselves. Oh, yeah, for sure. To not sure. be so judgmental and to, you know, you don't always get it right on the first time. Sometimes it is a process, even when you do then all the right things and the mindset and you get into the habit. It does take a little bit of time to turn a ship, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And we and the real truth is we only learn by making mistakes and then learning from those mistakes. We don't learn by trying to make everything perfect. What? What? You know, I, I mean, I think that that is probably the biggest, um, you know, nugget that we can drop sort of at the end of this interview is to say that if you think that this is about perfection and then when you figure it out from here on out after you've done, you know, the work and the development that you're now never going to make another mistake and everything's going to be magically falling into place, not happening. Not happening. Not perfection happening. is not a destination and neither is success right in our minds somehow it got twisted that if we could just be perfect or we could just get it right or if we could just be a success we'll be safe and that place does not exist it's a it's a fantasy it's a fairy tale it doesn't exist the only way that we stay certain or safe is by allowing ourselves to make mistakes understanding what caused the mistake learning from it and then making new choices that allows us to move forward and it doesn't mean you're a bad person it means you're a human being. That's how all things work in life, by understanding from the mistakes so that we can make different decisions. Because that's our greatest power, our ability to choose. I love that. And that's a great way for us uh, to end this interview. So, David, how can we find out more about you? Tell us about your uh, programs and where we can get good free stuff, how we can learn more about you. The best place to go is the Successful Mind Podcast. Um, and you could look it up. It's on all the podcast channels. Uh, we're ranked highest in the business podcast channels, but it's the Successful Mind Podcast. And that is all free teaching. Like we're not asking anything from anybody there. We give our best content. If you want to know more about the company and how you could be involved, it's davidnagel.com. Uh, and then you can go there and, and find that out. But those are the two best places. Excellent. Well, so uh, thank you so much for being on the Business Growth Architect show. This thank has you. been such a pleasure for me. And thanks to all of our listeners. You are amazing. We are so grateful for you to be here. And if you want to know what your number one business growth blocker is, go take the quiz at growthblockerquiz.com and stay tuned for more episodes with awesome guests. Thank you so much and goodbye. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take 
one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build, and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beata Schillett, The Growth Architect, and goodbye.